In the second week of our current message series for the season of Advent, we began last week reflecting on secrets. There's something irresistible about secrets. Does the word secret gets our attention and fuels our desire to learn more. We're interested in a secret even if it doesn't have a big impact on our lives, even if it's irrelevant to our lives, even if it's just plain irrelevant. We want to know. Secrets create tension that we need to resolve. They stir curiosity and motivate us to listen and learn. We keep secrets because perhaps they contain sensitive information that we're not comfortable sharing, or even more basically, information that's controver- con- that, that is nobody else's business. Sometimes it's just prudent to keep a secret. It's strategic to do so. You keep something a secret because it's not yet time to reveal it. We keep secrets for good reasons, but then we reveal those secrets for very good reasons too. You might choose to reveal a secret you have if it is a burden you're carrying. You share the secret to lessen the load and perhaps to find the help that you need. Perhaps you share a secret secret to deepen a connection and build a relationship with somebody else. If we share a secret, we share a very special bond. We reveal secrets because we want someone else to know, to know us, to know our hearts. We all have a fundamental need to be known, to be understood. We need to share our story with others, so we share our secrets with others, our struggles and fears, our hopes and dreams. We reveal secrets to people who will keep our secrets, people we can trust, people who are for us, people who value the secrets we share. So we also went on last week to to say that God has secrets. It's true, he does. God has secrets. God has secrets, and sometimes he hides these secrets. That's true, too. But here's the thing. He hides them for you, not from you. There's a difference. He hides secrets for you to to encourage you to care about them, to search for them, to find them, to, to learn about them and know them. Perhaps you've never considered that before, but it's perfectly true, and nothing could be clearer in Scripture. God keeps secrets for you. He has secrets for you, too, secrets he wants to share with you, secrets about what he's doing in the world. Take another look at today's gospel reading for the second Sunday of Advent. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, and this is what he proclaimed, one mightier than I is coming after me, the basic message of the Advent season. God shares the secret of what he will do through the coming of Christ. And in this case, he shares it through the prophet John. Some prophets were great, like John the Baptist. Some were lesser known, but all the prophets were simply people God trusted, people God could trust with his secrets. Another place in Scripture, we learn this about secrets. The prophet Amos tells us, surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret secrets to his servants, the prophets. God acts in the world, but before he acts, he lets his prophets know what he's doing. The story of Christmas is simply that. The story of the first Christmas was the story of God revealing his secrets to Mary and Joseph and John and Elizabeth, to the shepherds and the wise men. He reveals his secrets to include them as part of his plan. 
But as we kicked off Advent last week, we introduced a variety of ways that you too can be a part of God's plan this Christmas right here at Nativity. If you haven't had a chance, I invite you to take a look today at churchnativity.com slash Christmas, where you can learn more about everything that's going on here this season, like our Festival of Lights beginning December 11th and 12th is coming Friday and Saturday, and our spectacular Christmas Eve celebration with our must-have Christmas Eve kits. The kits are our gift to you, and if you haven't made your reservation for a kit yet, I suggest you do so today because there's a limited supply and they are going fast. But I especially want to bring to your attention our Christmas giving drive, our Christmas giving drive in which we're collecting toys and clothes, winter coats, supplies, and so much more for our partners in Baltimore City. You can go to our website and select the gifts that you would like to, to, to give. And then on the evening of the 11th or the 12th, drive by and drop off your unwrapped gifts and at the same time enjoy our festival of lights. It's going to be an enchanting exchange and a magical evening. Please be a part of it. Today, we're looking at how we position ourselves to receive God's secrets, how we hear God's secrets. How do you hear God's secrets? And to do it, we're looking at a passage from the Gospel of Mark. Mark's Gospel is the shortest Gospel and, in a sense, the most action-packed. And so it's a great place to start reading the Bible if you're looking for a place to start. Anyway, here's how Mark's Gospel begins. He writes, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Well, that seems superfluous <coughs> since it's obviously the beginning. But Mark is deliberately invoking the beginning of another book, the book of Genesis, the very beginning of the whole Bible. And certainly you'll remember that the Bible begins in the beginning, in the beginning. Did you know that gospel means good news? Mark wants to establish first thing right off the bat that his book is all about good news, all about a beginning that is a new beginning, good news about a new creation to restore and renew the creation that was damaged in the Genesis story, a new beginning that is made possible because Jesus is the Christ, the anointed, the Messiah, the Son of God who's come into the world to change and transform the world. The turning point in human history. Meeting him, getting to know him, stepping into a relationship with him is life-changing and world-transforming. The secrets of God are always good news that he wants to share with us. It's always about something good God is going to do. Even the challenging messages, even when they're difficult to hear, God is, is, is sharing with us good news. Mark continues. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. It was another prophet, the ancient prophet Isaiah, who understood the secret of, that God would one day do in Christ. Isaiah, the most prolific of the prophets, was eventually succeeded by John the Baptist, the last, the greatest prophet coming before Christ. And it was John's job to make immediate preparation for that coming, making straight his path, getting people's attention so that they could pay attention when at last Christ came. The voice of one crying out in the desert, 
is referring to the word of God the prophet speaks. You know, the main insight when it comes to God's secrets is his word. Hearing God's secrets begins by hearing his word, which begins by reading scripture. Scripture is the word of God in his very own words. And many of God's secrets are hidden for you right there in plain view. As you read the scripture, you come to know better God's voice, how he acts, what he has to say, what he thinks. Reading scripture teaches us to hear and recognize God's voice. And that's not always easy because most often, not always, but most often, God speaks in a small voice. Makes sense, right? I mean, think about it. How do you share a secret? You don't go around shouting it out loud. You whisper it. You speak it softly. The same is true of God. God shares his secrets in the still, small voice that we can hear in our hearts. To begin to hear God's secrets, we start with Scripture. But both Isaiah and John also talk about preparation. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. When it comes to learning God's secrets, it's also all about planning and preparation. I mean, think about it. Anything that's worth doing requires preparation. And the very best advice of all is to form a plan, to form a reading plan, a scripture reading plan. There are lots of different plans out there easily available, but without a plan, it's probably not going to happen, or at least it's not going to happen consistently. And I speak from personal experience. John adds this detail, or Mark adds this detail about John. He appeared in the desert. What's the significance of that? Well, at this point, John went out of his way, way, way out of his way to get away from the rest of his life. Hard break. John prepared the way for Jesus by going out of his way into the desert. That just makes sense too, doesn't it? Where do you go to share a secret? To a discreet location. You step aside right? Well, if you want God <coughs> to reveal his secrets to you, then you need to step aside. You need to get away from the distractions of the world around you. You need a time that's a quiet time and a place that will accommodate that quiet time, a place away from social media and the other members of your household and all the rest of the noise in your life. Mark adds that John is in the desert preaching a baptism of repentance. This is another piece, another secret of, of when it comes to God's secrets, repentance. Repentance is a word with sometimes negative connotations associated with rigorous religious views of sin and judgment and punishment and damnation and all that stuff that is exactly the sort of stuff lots of people leave the church over. But John didn't preach repentance to scare people away. He preached repentance to encourage them. The actual word is a Greek word that simply means to change your mind. Repent means to turn away, to turn from our attention and our absorption with the world and pay attention to God instead and perhaps to allow God's word to change your mind. Because maybe, maybe, maybe you've been wrong about something. Maybe you've been wrong about someone. So, to repent, to recap, God's secrets will be most often revealed to you through his word as you read it. When he speaks to you, it will likely be in a still, small voice as you read. And the more you read, the more easily you'll recognize God's voice. And as you do, you could find yourself changing your mind. 
Set yourself up for success regarding a time for your quiet time and a place for your quiet time. And most of all, find or form a plan, a reading plan for Scripture. And if you don't have a plan and you don't know where to start, sign up for our daily devotional. It's called Worship Fully. We'll send it to you automatically every single morning. Another idea is to commit to read the Gospel of Mark this Advent. Read a chapter a day. If you start today, you can finish by Christmas. We put a reading plan together for you. You can find it on our Facebook page. You know, the very first duty of a prophet is to listen. A prophet's work begins by listening. It begins there, but it doesn't end there. Take one more look at that message of John. He said, one mightier than I is coming after me. God's secrets for us are actually no secret at all because they're always ultimately all about Christ and preparing the way for others to come to know him too. God actually wants you to be at least a little bit like John the Baptist this Advent. He wants you to prepare the way for others to get to know him this Christmas, at least some others. So as you pray this week, why not ask God to put on your heart who he wants you to invite to be a part of our online Christmas Eve celebration beginning at 3.30 on Christmas Eve. We have invitation cards on our website that you can use. Pick one you like. Print it up in full color or black and white. And then share it with your unchurched family and friends. You could include the invitation in your Christmas card or share it electronically. God does nothing without his prophets. That's what the Bible tells us. God does nothing without his prophets. And guess what? That's you.